In this video, I'll walk through the process of creating a map of the density of crime in different places. As an example, we'll look at how common bike thefts were in different parts of Vancouver in 2020. As with any R script, the first thing we need to do is load the R packages that we'll need. In this case, we will need the GG Spatial package to access a base map of streets in Vancouver. And we'll also use the SF Hotspot package to transform the locations of lots of individual crimes into an estimate of the overall density of crime in different places, using a technique called kernel density estimation. Finally, we will use the SF package to wrangle spatial data and the tidyverse package for general data wrangling. We can run the code to load these packages in a couple of ways. First, we make sure the cursor is on the line of code we want to run, and then we can either click the Run button in our studio, or use the keyboard shortcut Control and Enter on Windows, or Command and Enter on a Mac to run that line of code. Note that I've loaded all the packages at the start of my script so that it is easy to see which packages are loaded. This makes the code much easier to read than if I loaded packages only when I needed them at various places throughout the script. The second step in making most maps in R is to load the data we need. For this map, I need two data sets. The first one I'm going to call bike thefts and contains the locations of bike thefts in Vancouver in 2020. The raw data available to us contains records of several different types of theft. Since we're only interested in bike thefts, and we know we will need the data to be in a spatial data format, we can do some initial data wrangling at the same time as loading the data using the pipe operator. Once I've loaded the bike theft data, I can use the head function to see what the structure of the data is. This is always a good idea when loading a new data set. Note that I'm not going to run the head function in the R source window, where I'm writing the rest of my script. That's because you should only put code into an R script if that code is necessary to produce the final result. In this case, the final result will be a map, and the output from head isn't necessary to produce that map. If you want to run a piece of code as part of the process of writing or developing your script, but that code isn't necessary to produce the final map, you should instead run the code in the R console. Think of the console as a place to run code that you don't need to store the result of, while the source panel is the place to write code that produces results you need to keep. We don't need to store the result of the head function for use later. We just want to use it to look at the structure of the data. So we run head in the R console rather than including it in our script. We can see that each row in the bike thefts object represents one theft. We can also see there is a column in the data called geometry, which represents the location of each theft. The second data set we need is the boundaries of neighborhoods in Vancouver, which we will use to add some context to our map. Now we've loaded the data, the next step is to transform the locations of individual thefts into an overall estimate of the density of thefts in different areas. Mapping crime density, rather than the locations of individual crimes, can make it much easier to see the crime patterns that we're generally most interested in. This is because point maps are quite bad at showing crime patterns. Once there are more than a few crimes in an area, it's likely that some will start to occur at the same locations as previous crimes. That means you can never be sure if a point on a map is actually one point, or a dozen or more points stacked exactly on top of each other. Density maps make it much easier to see patterns. To estimate the overall patterns of crime based on the locations of individual offences, we can use the hotspot KDE function from the SF hotspot package. We'll learn more about how to use this function in the tutorial accompanying this video. But for now, you can just note that we are giving the bandwidth adjust argument a value of less than one to show a bit more detail in the patterns on our map than we would see by default. Once we've calculated the estimate of crime patterns, we will then transform the coordinate reference system of the result using ST transform. We need to do this so we can then use the ST intersection function to clip the dataset created by Hotspot KDE. Clipping the result of Hotspot KDE so that it only shows estimates of crime patterns for areas for which we have data is important, since otherwise our map could be misleading. We can run this code by clicking on any of the lines of code that are connected by pipe operators into this code pipeline, then either clicking the Run button or using the keyboard shortcut. In either case, R will run all the lines of code that are connected together by a pipe operator. When we run this code, we see a progress bar appear in the console. 
because the calculations underlying Hotspot KDE take a while to run. We will know the code is finished running when the command prompt triangle appears in the console. At this point, we've done all the preparation needed so we can now create the map. The first step in creating any map in R is to create an empty GG plot object we can add layers to. Remember that we add layers from the bottom up, so layers we add to ggplot first will appear below layers we add later on. The first layer we want to add is a base map, showing the main streets and other features of Vancouver. This will help people looking at our map identify the patterns of crime in different areas. We add base maps using the annotation map tile function from the ggspatial package. We use the type equals carto light argument to specify the style of the base map we want, and the zoom in equals zero argument to specify that annotation map tile should automatically choose how much detail to add to the base map. The next layer to add is the layer showing the density of bike theft in different places. Since Hotspot KDE produces an SF object, we can add it to our map with the geome SF function. We use the AES function within geome SF to specify that each cell in this layer should be colored according to the value of the KDE column in the dataset. That column gives the estimate of the density of bike theft in that grid cell relative to the density in other parts of Vancouver. We will also specify that the density layer should be slightly transparent using the alpha argument. This means we will be able to see the base map through the density layer. At this point, we can run the code to see what the map looks like based on what we've written so far. By default, maps created in R appear in the RStudio plots panel. This map looks pretty good, but we can add some extra context to make it more useful. The next layer we'll add is the boundaries of each of Vancouver's neighborhoods. This will make it easier for people to find their part of the city on the map. At the same time, we can add the names of the neighborhoods to make it easier to refer to different places. Just as we use the geomsf function to add spatial layers to a map, we can use the geomsf label function to add text at specific geographic locations. We use the AES function to specify that the label text should be based on the name argument in the neighborhoods object and the str wrap function to wrap any neighborhood names longer than 10 characters over multiple lines. This stops the labels overlapping other areas. In the same way we made the density layer slightly transparent so we can see the base map, we're going to use the alpha argument to make the labels slightly transparent so that we can see the density layer underneath them. We're also going to set the color of the labels, reduce the line height so that labels that are broken over multiple lines don't have too much space between them, and set the text size. Finally, we're going to remove the default border around each label using the label.size argument. That's all the layers we're going to add to the map. Before we plot the final map, we're going to add two more functions to this ggplot stack to make the map easier to read. Firstly, we're going to use the scale fill distiller function to control the colors of the density layer on the map. For this map, we're only going to make one change to the default color scheme, which is to reverse the direction of the relationship between the density values and the colors on the map, so that darker colors represent areas with more crime. Finally, we'll add the theme void function to the ggplot stack. The ggplot2 package comes with lots of different themes for maps and charts of which the theme void function simply specifies that our map shouldn't have any axis labels, background shading, or other supporting elements. We can now run the code that creates the map by making sure the cursor is somewhere inside the ggplot stack of functions and then clicking run or using the keyboard shortcut. However, at the end of writing a script, it's useful to run the whole script again from the start. This makes sure that we've included all the code we need in the right order and that our code doesn't produce any unnecessary output. To run the whole R script we have written, instead of clicking run, we can click the source button. This will run all the code in our script file, one function after another. Now we can see in our final map that bike thefts in Vancouver in 2020 were concentrated in the downtown and West End neighborhoods. So we might want to go on to do further analysis of those neighborhoods to understand those patterns in more detail.